Hey everybody, Christy Glass here from Christy Glass Knits. I have been glued to my phone during coronavirus and I found this awesome account, Siempre Oveja, and the sweaters are so colorful, inspiring. I am so interested in every single thing on this account. So I reached out, crossed my fingers, and she said yes. So please introduce yourself. Hola, soy Siempre Oveja. Y bueno, acá lo invito a mi mundo. Eh, me dedico a crear armaduras para enfrentar la vida. Well, my name is uh, Siempre Oveja. Um, I create uh, with a lot of colors and I, I uh, always I, I make um, armor to to work with life to in front life. What's your translator's name? We should introduce you to. Francisco is my name. <laughs> <laughs> and is your first name Joyce, or how do you say it in, in Espanol? Joyce. Joyce. Okay. Joyce. Good. Yeah. Um, I recently was reading an interview. And you said you always use sheep wool, colors, tenderness, and joy. Uh, ¿Cómo se dice tenderness and joy en español? Uh, ternura y alegría. So I love that you add tenderness and joy to your supplies list with wool. Can you talk about that a little bit? ¿Cómo lo, la herramienta? The tools that she used to... Well, I just love that you say, when I'm creating, I always use sheep, color, tenderness, and joy. I love that that's part of it. Ternura y alegría. Entonces, como sí. explicar un poco eso. Bueno, es que cada vez que realizo uno de mis chalecos, eh, todos tienen un significado muy profundo. Entonces, más allá de las herramientas, que son eh, las agujas o el crochet, Eh, todos van cargados con una intención y con una razón de ser. Por eso cada una tiene eh, elementos como son la alegría o poderes para sentirse más fuerte. It's a little bit like, like um, every time that uh, I make a vest, I use uh, needles, but not only the needles. I mean, I try to... No solamente ocupo lana, sino que además Eh, como cada uno tiene ah. un significado y una razón de ser, eh, tienen poderes, tienen ternura, tienen emoción, tienen mucha uh, every, every Every best, uh, I try to give you something different because uh, I try to give you something meaningful, something that that is really important, not only for me, sino, uh, but on other people too. So. Uh, I, I try to use not only uh, needles or needs, I mean, I try to use colors, I try to use love, I try to use turniness, and to give this vest uh, a little of me, I mean, for that. How did you learn the fiber arts? When and how did you learn? Como aprendiste cuando? Ah, yeah. Como el, el arte de... Aprendí a los siete años, me enseñó mi tía, so when you were seven years old, your aunt taught you. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. I'm seven years old, it's <laughs> that mm -hmm. And y aprendí eh, con las dos agujas. With the two needles. Eh, revés y derecho. Back and footwork. Back and... Con palitos de sushi. With sushi sticks. <laughs> so you were using chopsticks. Chopsticks, yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. At seven years old, it's... Did you get little splinters? Did you get splinters on your fingers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so you're a young adult now, so have you been doing it this whole time? Uh, she uh, made his first scarf at seven years old. That was his now. And then, what's yeah. your next question? Please? And you've just been doing it ever since, your whole life? Yeah. Sí, pero hace... Uh, cuatro años, volví a tejer. Yes, but uh, 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 since uh, four years ago, I started to uh, knit again. And you also do crochet. Don't you do little toys? Yeah. So is your business toys and 
garments. Talk about what is siempre, like, what is siempre oveja? Like, Pregunta difícil. Eh, <laughs> Do you feel difficult question? It's a hard question, yeah. Hard question. Eh, eh, siento que siempre oveja es más que un tejido, es una experiencia. It's an it's experience. More, it's an experience, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so is it, oh, is it ever changing? Is it just kind of, are you leading with your heart and just sort of making what you want to make? Lo, sí. que, lo que tengas que hacer, lo que aparezca, como siempre cambiando. Sí, porque siempre oveja es el reflejo de, de, de lo que tengo adentro, como de mi alma y de lo que estoy viviendo. Uh, yes, because siempre oveja es el reflejo de mi alma, de lo que estoy viviendo, de lo que tengo dentro de mí. So what is happening right now? It's these awesome bulky sweaters with the hearts. <laughs> these That's sweaters right. is what's coming out right now. Talk about these sweaters. Ese suéter nació el 18 de octubre del año pasado. That that sweater uh, born uh, uh, October 18 the last year. Here in Chile was the estallido social. Uh, it's, there was a, a big uh, happening in Chile about the protests and uh, and all that thing with the government. And in that day, that's when the the uh, that that sweater was born. So, because of what was happening in your environment no, uh, around you, oh, go no. ahead. Era para explicar, for explain a little bit. El contexto. Claro, the context is for <laughs> explain a little bit, for he can explain the, the sir. Entonces, yo primero tenía la base, que era gris, y tenía, okay. el, tenía el chaleco puesto, y por muchos días, hasta que llegó el 18 de octubre. Y lo veía ahí y simplemente no, no me gustaba verlo gris, solo, opacado. Y sentí tantas emociones, tantas cosas sucediendo, que lo primero que vino a mí fue bordar los corazones. Well, uh, there's, there was a base of that sweater that it was gray. And uh, there was there for a long time, I mean, hanging there without no colors. And uh, October 18 was the day that with all that emotion and all that thing that was having in that in the moment uh that's what i tried to do and put those heart on that on the sweater because it's uh it's like the demonstration of my emotions in the moment so she had this she had this gray sweater just sitting on her hanger and then she pulled it down and took some yarn and double stitched over it to make these hearts it was the way you were coping with the unrest around you. Yeah, es como la forma en la que tú estabas como llevando lo que estaba pasando. Sí, porque sentía que lo que estaba sucediendo era eso, era como eh, algo que no estaba cambiando y estábamos sacando de alguna forma como nuestra voz. Entonces. Uh, I felt that that was uh, really happening to us. I mean, that was something that was uh, it's changing. And that's the way that uh, demonstrate that we are, uh, I mean, uh, putting our voice there to, to say something. And that's the way that I, I plan on the sweater. It's craftivism is what we call it in America. Yes. Craftivism. So these pieces that I'm seeing on your Instagram feed, are these pieces that you're selling to others? Yes, the fans. Eso, todo, todo lo que tú haces en Instagram, ¿lo vendes? Eh, sí, lo vendo. And, yes. your, and the process is, do people message you and then you make them something? Sí. Yes. <laughs> and do you ship around the world? ¿Qué cosa? Sí, te repartes alrededor del mundo. Sí, a todo el mundo. And Now it's kind of hard because the situation... <laughs> Pandemia. But, <laughs> but yeah, in, in other moments, yeah. And so talk about this one. Did you, did someone say, I want a giant sweater with some wavy stripes? Or did you come up with this and put it on Instagram and then someone said, I'll take it. <laughs> you make something and post it and then someone says, I want to buy that. Ah, or, or, ah, okay, okay. Or does someone contact her and say, this is what I have in mind. Can you make that? Si es que lo que tú lo subes. Y ellos te, lo, te dicen, yo quiero ese, o te lo piden. Y te dicen, así como, 
yo tengo esta idea en mente, como quiero que me hagas esto. Ah, de las dos formas. De two ways. Both. Both ways. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite way? What do you prefer? ¿Qué prefieres tú? ¿Que te lo escojan o que lo, te lo piden como a pedir? Eh, prefiero fluir sola. She prefers to flow alone. Flow alone. Make, make the sweater and, and that the people, the person in particular, choose the other one. Yeah. It's like the sweater finds its owner. That's a, <laughs> como que el sueter encuentra su dueño. Sí. Exactly. <laughs> like it comes out of your heart, you put it in the world, and then the right match <laughs> finds it. That, that's sí. the idea. I love that. <laughs> Now, talk about when you discovered the connection between the sheep, the animal, and the wool. Some people learn to knit and crochet with acrylic or like plastic uh, yarn. Okay, okay. And then, and that's often the case when you're age seven, right? Like, you know, siete años. But then you discover, oh, oh. this, uh. this wool comes from this animal. And it's, it seems to me that that really is important to her that she had, that she uses natural fibers. Eh, siempre me ha gustado que las cosas tengan vida. Entonces, para mí, el pelo de la oveja eh, es vida. Mm, Entonces, life. por eso me gusta la fibra que tiene porque es, siento que yo la toco y siento que está ahí presente. Es por eso. Uh, well, I always love it, the, the things that had life, that had, uh, and, uh, and the hair or the wall of the sheep, it's like the, a demonstration of that. So, Uh, I want that on my sweater. Mm -hmm. I, have, I, I want to give you life. I want to demonstrate that. Mm -hmm. like, like preserve life mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. some way. Mm -hmm. So where do you get the wool in Chile? Where do you get your wool? In the south of Chile. From, in the south. From the south. Do you have to order it online? Are there stores? Lo ordenas en línea, vas a tiendas. Eh, trabajo con productores locales. I work with local producers. Mm. And what is the fiber world like in Santiago? In Santiago? What's, uh, what's the more used? No, no, no. What, um, what's the knitting culture like in Santiago? Like, uh -huh. are there uh -huh. other, do you knit with others? Do many people knit? You know, what's the community like? Ah, in Santiago, ¿cómo es el tema del tejido? Mucha gente teje, hay grupos, no hay grupos, o es como súper, o no es tan popular. No, ahora en Chile hace ya dos años que es un boom el tejido. Un boom. Es mucha gente teje. Well, in Chile, since, uh, since, two, de since two years ago, there's a lot of people that need a lot. Oh, so it was, uh, it was like a boom. A knitting boom. Yeah, ¿Sí? a knitting boom. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. What is the climate like where you live? Is it hot, cold, seasons? Uh, el clima. Well, here oh, it's, it's, calor. It's, a, it, it's a it's a little extreme. I mean, in 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 winter it's a it's a little cold, but in summer it's a lot hot. You know and Actually, that's, that's principally the two stations that we can see. I mean, fall and, we, and, and spring really don't, you don't look that much, but it's principally uh, hot and, and cold. It's spring for one day and it's fall for one day. Something like that. <laughs> you have that one day where you go, oh, it seems like, and then it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> it, that's it. <laughs> Very uh, much like here. I want to talk about um, your favorite colors. What are your favorite colors? Oh, eh, uno de mis colores favoritos es el amarillo. Yellow. Yellow. Me encanta el amarillo, mira. Ajá, yes. <laughs> eh, pero realmente eh, me gustan todos. No, tengo un color favorito. Solamente tengo un problema con el color negro. Me cuesta tejer con negro. Well, I like every color, so I don't have a favorite color, but I only have one problem with the black color. 
that it's a lot of hard to knit with that color. It's so hard to see it. You have to have a bright light. No sé, eh, simplemente me cuesta cada vez que tengo que hacer una prenda con negro, me demoro mucho. Every time that I have to do a vest or a sweater with that with black color, uh, it takes it takes so long. Yeah, it would look really cool with your hearts on it, though. <laughs> like if you made a black sweater and put these hearts on it, it would look really cool. <laughs> There's one. There's one. <laughs> Find it. <laughs> Find it. Do, do you knit more or crochet more? Which do you do more? Tejes más o crochet más? Agujas. Needles, crochet. Crochet. Crochet more? Needles. 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 Oh, you knit Needles. more. Knit more. Oh, with needles. Yeah, knitting more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, what else was I going to ask you? I say needle. I don't know the, the technical name. <laughs> yeah. What? You're doing great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, hold on. Hold on. I'll, I'll show you. So, uh, I have right here. Do I have it right here? So, two dos needles knitting. Uh, okay. Knitting. And um, one hook. Crochet. Hook. Ah, crochet. Hook. Okay. Yeah. And it looks different. So this is crochet. Kind of look like knots. And this is knitting. Uh, they just look different. I don't. I don't know why. Um, so are there any? <laughs> are there any yarn or fiber festivals in Chile? Si algún festival de lana o algún evento eh, en Chile. Mm, hay, pero mm, no en realidad, no, no es tanto. Uh, other parts of South America that you know of or no? En alguna otra parte de South America que sepas que se hace como festivales de lana. Mm, no. No, it's not, it's not common. You have to start one now that there's a boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a great idea. Uh, how do you say, ¿Cómo se dice siempre oveja en inglés? Always sheep. Always sheep. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> and that's why you have that your little sheep head on your profile picture. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Always sheep. Or sheep, always. No, always sheep. Yeah, always that's... sheep. Have you, knit, have you knit or crochet with a fiber that is not sheep? Hay alguna ha hecho con fibra que no sea de oveja. No. No alpaca, no llama, no silk, no nothing. No. Just sheep. <laughs> Only <Sí>. sheep. <laughs> Always sheep. <laughs> Always, siempre oveja. Exacto. Uh, now you used to work in an antiques shop. Yeah. And no, 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 no. Have you left that completely and you're just only making these pieces now for work? Sí. Wow. Es que eh, cuando trabajaba ahí, eh, se terminó ese trabajo y yo comencé a tejer de forma terapéutica. Y ahí es donde parte siempre oveja. Well, when I, I left that job, I started to need like a therapy. <laughs> Got it. Therapy. Like a therapy. Uh, so that helped really much. Mm, same. Same. Uh, so... Talk, talk to people about how you follow a creative path because it is hard to leave a job that's steady to, to make things with your hands to pay your bills. So talk about how you made that decision and how you could inspire others to do that. Eh, siento que fue un... Eh, cuando yo tomé la decisión de trabajar para mí misma, eh, siento que eso ya venía desde antes, desde mis 19 cuando dije que yo quería vivir del tejido. Siento que ese fue un momento mágico donde ¡pum! estalló y se me hizo realidad el tiempo después. Eh, al comienzo fue súper difícil porque, claro, hay cuentas, hay que planificar, ordenar, es algo nuevo. 
eh, pero la verdad es que amaba tanto tejer y sentía que tenía tanto que expresar a través de mis manos que encontré mi fórmula perfecta para hacerlo y en ese momento dije ya, ¿sabes qué? Lo hago. Y convicción, amor y pasión y voy a seguir, seguir, seguir. Pero al comienzo es difícil porque por el dinero, pero después todo se va dando so, simplemente solo. Uh, well, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to try to, <laughs> to say everything. And, uh, uh, first, it's a, it's, a, it's a hard decision to work uh, by myself, but it's something that it came from, from before. From. So when I have the 19 years old, I decide to live with my best, with my work. Uh, and that was a magic moment for me because it's a very important decision. At first, it was very hard, it was very difficult because we have to pay bills, we have to uh, need money to do things, but I kind of need, I kind of feel the need that I have to do something with my hands, mm -hmm. uh, uh, with love, with conviction, uh, to do something. And that's the way that I start to do that. And uh, well, it's basically that. Sí, creo que fue más difícil para mi entorno entender qué era lo que yo estaba haciendo que lo que yo estaba eh, como fabricando o creando. It was more hard to my the people that surround by me or by surround me that that for me because they have to understand why I what I was creating. Porque But yo ya tenía la idea. I'm, I'm already <laughs> have the idea in my mind. Mm -hmm. Do you have any show and tell? Do you have anything nearby to show us? Talk about that. Wow. <laughs> eh, uh. Mira. En realidad, eh. I'm a translator and, <laughs> and a model. You're so good. <laughs> <laughs> eh, bueno, eh, este chaleco es muy especial para mí porque un poco viene a cerrar un ciclo muy profundo, que fue la razón por la que me llevó a crear Chaleco. Eh, su nombre es Catarsis, porque de alguna forma necesitaba hacer esa catarsis para terminar un ciclo, como con una pareja que yo había tenido. Uh, well. That's a very important uh, sweater because it's like a, like a end of a cycle. I mean, that, that sweater uh, born when I was uh, ended a relationship with my last boyfriend. So that's like a catharsis. I don't know, uh, really, I, I don't know the, the word no, it's in English. Cathartic. It's cathartic. Cathartic. Uh, cathartic. Uh -huh. uh, and you're using, the, it's like therapy again, going back to exactly. the therapy idea. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's the that's the reflex of a, that's catharsis. That relationship was the that took there to create uh, sweaters. Thank you, ex-boyfriend. That that end of of relationship was the uh, the main uh, reason to start to make sweaters. So he has a, still a special place in your heart, but it's really small. <laughs> oh. Really small. <laughs> <laughs> Negative <laughs> space. Así. Cuando, bueno, cuando yo decidí crear chalecos fue porque yo necesitaba ser abrazada y contenida porque había terminado esa relación. When, when I started to make these sweaters, I really needed to be hot and be contained. Mm. Uh, That's the way that I make to feel like that way, make a bed. Y me autofabriqué los abrazos. Let's go. I make myself fox. <laughs> Did you design that sweater? ¿Tú lo diseñaste? Sí. Do you sell your patterns or only your finished objects? No, solo los productos terminados. Only the, the, the final, the product end. So the well, design, the design <laughs> is a secret. Yeah, but uh, but uh, for the moment, 
only that. <laughs> Are there any parting thoughts you'd like to share with us today? Anything else you'd like to share? Lo que me gustaría en realidad decir es que eh, es súper importante solamente fluir como a través de los diseños, de las formas. Es muy importante tener un mensaje, transmitirle a la gente algo importante eh, o darle las herramientas para que se logren comunicar o logren decir qué es lo que sienten desde adentro. Para mí es muy importante darle eso a la gente, contención, amor, y en realidad colores para alegrar un poco la vida. <risa> Así que en realidad es eso, es como gracias por darme el espacio también de poder comunicarme. Así que nada, estoy súper contenta, muy feliz por esta oportunidad. Así que muchas gracias. Bueno, uh, well, eh, <risa> I'm going to sum up again. Uh, it's for me very important to flow with the designs. Uh, um, I mean, deliver a message for the people, uh, deliver or uh, gave them tools to uh, uh, to th they can show their feelings. That I mean, I like to um, with with the sweaters and all my work. I like to uh, cre create, make uh, joy, make the people be joy. I mean, uh, deliver love and. Make me maybe make the life of the people a little bit uh, happier. So, uh, I like to thank you for the opportunity for for this interview because it's very important for me. Well, I want to thank you for spending some time with me. I wish language wasn't so much of a barrier because I do think we could go deeper and deeper into your work. It's beautiful work, and. So I will refer my audience to, there is a blog post on Bobble Clubhouse where you answer some great questions in Espanol and in English. Please. And also uh, I'm going to put a link to your Instagram page underneath this video because you have to go to the Instagram page. Uh -huh. the, the sweaters, the vests, everything is so beautiful and so inspiring. And that is why I wanted to speak to you today. So thank you, muchas gracias. <laughs> thank you. Gracias. Bye. 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 <laughs> and thank you for translating and modeling. Gracias. I'm sorry. Gracias. Uh, that's all. That's all I can do. <laughs> <laughs>